Former Pistons president of basketball operations and head coach Stan Van Gundy joined a local Detroit radio station last week, and he had some interesting comments on the Pistons' young core, Cade Cunningham, and what direction he expects the Pistons to go this offseason. So we'll chat about that, as well as some other things in just a moment. Passing lane, sky's a jam. Dynamite dunk in the crowd. Welcome back to Pearson's Intellect. I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore three on three. And if you're feeling so kind, please hit that subscribe button. We continue to grow the channel. Appreciate all of you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep pushing out content this whole off season, reacting to news, rumors, uh, as well as touching on draft free agency, all that kind of fun stuff. I expect a lot to happen this summer uh, at all levels of the franchise. So stay tuned and I would appreciate, yeah, any subscriptions, any of the love means the world to me. So, as I mentioned off the top, former president of basketball operations and head coach Stan Van Gundy, uh, who was with the Pistons from 2014 to 2018 for around four seasons there. Uh, He's, for those that might not know, he was a head coach with the Miami Heat. Uh, then he was a head coach with the Dwight Howard kind of era Orlando Magic's teams in the late 2000s that went to the finals. He then came to Detroit. He spent his season with the Pelicans and he now is a commentator with TNT, I believe. So he joined 97.1 The Ticket, on uh, which I believe is a local radio show in Detroit. I've seen some stuff come out of there. And they discussed a whole range of things. That was about a 30-minute interview. I'll put the link in the description. It was actually a pretty interesting conversation. I would say the 30 minutes, probably around 15 to 20 minutes of that was on the Pistons. Uh, so there's some interesting stuff in there where Stan kind of talks about his mistakes he made with the team, some of the good things he did, uh, some funny stories in there about the infamous Stan Van Gundy photo of him on the bike as well as that uh, kind of video of him dribbling the ball. Just some interesting stuff in there which, you know, uh, for me personally, I whilst I'm happy to admit the Stan era in Detroit was not successful, uh, I kind of like Stan as a coach. I think I think I used to always tune in and watch his post game interviews when I could. I, I just I don't know. I know he's not necessarily a player's coach, but I think I just love the passion he coached with. Uh, whether players appreciate it or not, that or not, I'm not sure that's the case. Uh, but you know, just as a fan, I remember I had a lot of hope when he came in as coach and that kind of thing. So I've, I've always kind of enjoyed a bit of Stan Van Gundy. So, uh, but I guess the talking points, as you can see, and what I spoke about off the top, uh, the interest, the things I found most interesting for the current day Pistons is obviously Stan's, uh, just his thoughts on Kay Cunningham, the Pistons young core and where he sees this team going this summer. And I want to start with Kay Cunningham, uh, off the top. Stan was asked by the radio station interviewer, I can't recall his name, but could you see, or what do you think of the idea of the Pistons trading Kane Cunningham? Uh, And Stan immediately said, no, I think that's absurd. He went on to say, I think Kay Cunningham is a really good player. Now, is he a superstar? I don't know. Uh, But I think I found that kind of interesting because I just think, uh, I'm not sure how much Pistons Stan watches, but... I found that interesting because Stan's kind of saying, is he a superstar? I don't know. And I think that's kind of where we all are with Cade. And not that that's a groundbreaking statement, but I think like that's kind of a little bit of the frustrating thing. Like, and one of the main emphasis this summer, I think we all want to see is this team be fully built around Cade Cunningham. Like no more like two bigs, like I've spoken about it, but no more like two bigs, put proper shooting around him. Ensure you have a lob threat, or if you're not going to have a lob threat, have a spacing five. Just we need to maximize Kay Cunningham and figure out like who he is because he's probably going to sign a max extension this summer. I would assume. I would probably. I would like to see that as a fan. Uh, so, uh, found that kind of interesting. He uh, Stan went on to say the thing that people want to discount all the time in sports is the role of luck. Kay Cunningham was the number one pick in that draft, and he's going to be a very good player in the league. Already is a good player but he's not Victor Wembanyama. 
if you get the number one pick in a different year, it changes the trajectory of your franchise. That's not anything you can plan for. That's simply luck and ping pong balls. So all of a sudden, San Antonio has a brighter future than the Pistons. And I think this kind of spoke to me and uh, it's, it's not even like a diss on K. It more had me reflecting at the time about how the Pistons... Not so much the 2020 draft, but more so these past two drafts where the Pistons, I believe in the 2022 draft, they finished with the second worst record in the league. I think Houston had the worst record in that one and they fell to five. And then obviously last year they fell from having the worst record to pick five. And it just shows, and and this will feed into my next point, but it just shows how, you know, there's plenty of ways to build a team and, this, this franchise has done a poor job with acquiring veterans and NBA-level talent to surround their young core with. But just goes to show, like, and and by no means am I saying Jaden Ivey, Asar Thompson, and Jalen Durant aren't going to be extremely productive players. But, you know, if the Pistons just, you know, in that 2022 draft, imagine if they'd Chet Holmgren or Paolo Banquero. Because if the Pistons get in the top two, I guarantee you they'll taking one of those two players. Like, imagine Cade Cunningham and Chet Holmgren. Like, Chet Holmgren is like, we talk about how this team needs a spacing five. I mean, if you have Chet Holmgren, like, you have that spacing five that can protect the rim on the other end. Like, that is such a rare type of player. And then imagine if they have Palo Carey. There you go. You have Cade and Palo. They're your one-two punch. It's your inside, outside. You probably run pick and roll with those two, like, it's just crazy how you miss on that draft. And then for this draft, imagine if the Pistons get in the top three. Now, there is a chance they take Scoot, but because they have Cade, like, obviously, if they pick one, they get Victor Wembanyama, franchise altering. If they had picked two, you would like to think they'd take Brandon Miller. It, it's just like, and, and I'm still have hope for the players they have, but it's just like, there's so much luck with the draft. And it shows why the Pistons kind of are at this point because you cannot at the same time, put all your eggs into the basket of young talent and draft only like the Pistons have had. That's why and why I feel like they find themselves where they are. But, um, you know, it was nice to hear Stan just say it's absolutely absurd to even consider trading Cade, even if you don't know if he's going to be a superstar because we still need to find that out. And hopefully this summer, that's the direction the Pistons go to surrounding Cade with the right talent. But the next point was kind of Stan's thoughts on the rest of the Pistons young core and this is this is really spicy because i think the fan base right now is very torn up on which player they should move should they keep or four should they trade two of the young guys like it's it's all over the shot and stan kind of said it's clear it's not the best young core in the league or even one of the top two or three so you're gonna have to supplement it as you go he's talking about the pistons young core i think they've got other good pieces Duran is a very good rebounder. Asar Thompson can defend. I personally really like Marcus Sasser and Jaden Ivey I like too. But those guys are all either low-level starters, fourth or fifth starters, or rotation pieces. They need two other guys at least to put with Kate Cunningham to have a chance to get better. And then he went on to say they would be making a mistake if they thought any of those guys are a number two or three guy on a contending type team. Now, that's a pretty damning statement. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, Stan, you don't know how to draft. You drafted Stanley Johnson. You drafted Luke Kennard over Donovan Mitchell, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's a bit of like, whilst I don't fully agree with that statement, I think it's kind of a sobering realization for us as Pistons fans because I tend to think that tapped in people around the NBA kind of see the Pistons young court like, like that. Now, like, and I think... When you just look at it with the production those players have produced and you kind of take away potential, I think that statement's 100% true. But I I think that within Asar Thompson, Jaden Ivey, Jaden Duran, I don't think there's a number two guy in there, but I think there's a third guy in there. Like I, I still 100% believe, and maybe I'm wrong, the high chance I could be, but I still believe... Of those three players, there is a number three type player, a number three, like a guy, a third talent that might, that I would like to say is worth a max contract at some point. That doesn't mean they're going to be the third highest score on the team, but in terms of impact and value, I believe one of those three guys can be your third most impactful player on a contending team. Like I still have that hope and I believe that, but 
it's very interesting to hear a former coach, a guy who would be incredibly tapped in with front officers all around the league, a guy who's just been in the NBA for so long is Stan Van Gundy, who as even a commentator now travels to stadiums and buildings and different teams all around the world, just to all around, sorry, the NBA, just to commentate, like he would be in amongst conversations and just that part there, they would be making a mistake if they thought any of those guys are a number two or three guy on a contending team. Um, let me know your thoughts on that because if that's the view from people from around the league, like, and maybe it's not, but I just think it's it's something to think about as fans and it kind of should prepare us for um, what SVG or Stan Van Gundy alluded to he thinks the Pistons will do this offseason um, because he said, and it was very interesting and it's not surprising, but it's kind of interesting, like, um, Stan was asked about his relationship with Tom Gores and he was extremely complimentary. He said Tom Gores has never been shy to spend money. He said he thinks that his intentions are right in terms of wanting to win, but um, maybe there's been some rough decisions in the past to achieve that. But when he was asked on what direction he expects the Pistons to go this summer, he said, my guess is Tom Gores wants to get this thing going quickly. He's not going to want to wait around on a young core and I think that's the right thing to do. And I think the context kind of that was like the Pistons are being rebuilding for like in this, with this front office, this is that this is going into their fifth season, fifth summer, fifth off season. So like, you know, I don't, I think, I, I think it'd be foolish to just to think that you can come back with all four of these guys because Okay, let me rephrase this. I don't think it's possible to get the necessary veteran talent for the to in order for this team to actually get into play in contention next season. I do not think it's possible to acquire the talent required without moving on from one of the core four or Isaiah Stewart and Marcus Sasser. Like you package them together just because the Pistons still owe that pick to the Knicks. They cannot move future draft capital. And so, like, so it's, if the Pistons, like, they also, because of the situation they find themselves in, they also cannot afford just to go run it back with the core four and spend a heap of cap space on, like, some, I, I don't know who they can get. And, and we're going to get into the franchise as long as, like, further into the season, but... I just feel like for them to have the necessary talent to actually win over 32, 33 games and actually be a chance of like playing contention, like I think they, it's feeling like they're going to have to move that pick or one of the core four, one of them together even to get a genuine like talent, like to get them, you know, to trade for that veteran or that high level starter. Maybe we, Maybe they somehow get an all-star because of this tax stuff and teams have to move on. Um, but in order to get someone like that, they're going to, I feel like they have to move on the core for them on the picks. And it was just interesting to hear Stan Van Gundy say, my guess is Tom Gores wants to get this thing going quickly. Now, this is where we have to hope that the Pistons hire the right um, president of Bath Corporations to make the right decisions because you don't want the current front office making these decisions because they just haven't, proven or shown the ability to do so so and that's why like this summer is just going to be huge i feel like i mean there's there's so much change needed and i would like to think this week we're going to start to hear about um an update on the front office and what's going on there because it's still whilst i'm not surprised we haven't heard from troy weaver or monty williams in the ex interviews it's kind of weird like that the players spoke a week ago now and we still haven't heard from their head coach or the general manager who put that team together. But maybe that's because the president of Bath Operations is about to come in and maybe they're about to make some changes with both of those guys. You never know. But it's still kind of weird to me we didn't hear from those guys. But I've come to kind of expect that with the way the Pistons unfortunately handle their PR and their player and staff availabilities. It always operates a little bit strange, but that is what it is. 
let me know your thoughts on Stan's comments, particularly on the kind of the rest of the young core, because uh, according to Stan, they don't have a number two or three guy. Um, he admits and believes Cade is one of those guys, but the Pistons don't have a top three um, player. Uh, they don't have three players assembled to contend is basically what Stan's saying. He believes they need to add those two. Um, and, you know, I, I agree with him to an extent, as I explained. So let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Uh, yeah. And until there's any more news or uh, any updates, that kind of thing, as always, go Pistons. 